हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ माई नेम इज़ निलेश प्रधान आई एम ए कंपनी सेक्रेटरी इन प्रैक्टिस आई विल बी टेलिंग यू थ्रू अबाउट सर्टन कॉन्सेप्ट अबाउट इनकॉर्पोरेशन ऑफ अ प्राइवेट लिमिटेड कंपनी बिफोर अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस स्टेप्स एज टू हाउ एंड हाउ क्विकली एंड इन बाथ वॉट वे वी कैन इनकॉर्पोरेट अ प्राइवेट लिमिटेड कंपनी आई विल टेल यू वॉट आर द बेसिक टाइप्स ऑफ कंपनी बेसिकली अ कंपनी अंडर द कंपनीज एक्ट अंडर द कंपनीज एक्ट टू थाउजेंड थर्टीन is categorized into private limited company and a public limited company a private limited company is a company which by its articles restricts the right of transfer of shares and prohibits an invitation to the public for taking any deposits and a public limited company which is not a private limited company and has a minimum paid up capital of 5 lakh rupees companies act also have concepts called as small companies one person company which have which have come as a as a introductory part or it as a introduction under the companies act 2013 interestingly these concepts are very important and they will go a long way also companies act has a concept called as foreign company now foreign company is something which is which a company has if established in india you know we have to follow the provisions of it now if you look at all these companies whether it is a small company whether it is a Uh, one person company private company public company the basic steps that are required to be followed for every kind of incorporation are almost the same now what i will run you through or make you understand is what are these steps in detail these steps are required to be followed with utmost integrity do not miss a single step do not try to rush through any step these steps if followed carefully the process of incorporation becomes more simple now so the steps involved are step 1 application for digital signature certificate called as dsc step 2 application for director's identification number also called as din step 3 making an application for getting a suitable name step 4 drafting of incorporation document which are memorandum of association articles of association and related forms and step 5 is submitting these documents with the appropriate authorities called as register of companies and getting certificate of incorporation for the same let's move on to the first slide making an application for digital signature now what is a digital signature digital signature is a encrypted code which is which represents the identity of a individual who if he had signed individually or signed manually now in order to make an application for din the basic prerequisite is to make an application for digital signature certificate there are various authorities to whom the powers have been granted by the ministry of corporate affairs these institutions have also have their distributors and agent and we can approach any of these for taking out a digital signature certificate for the respective person who are proposed to be appointed as directors of the company please understand as din the director's identification number is the most important step for any person to become a director of any company in the same way the digital signature certificate is the most important thing which one has to take mandatorily if one has to go for a digital or one has to go for a director's identification number without dsc din cannot be applied for step 2 making an application for director's identification number This application can be made in a form called as Form DIR-3. If you look at Form DIR-3, it's a simple form. All it contains is the data which one has to take from the concerned data, which is made available as the basic document from the concerned person who is proposed to be appointed as a director of a company, which includes the following: full name of the applicant, father's name, whether he is a citizen of India or not. nationality please understand citizenship and nationality are two different concepts date and place of birth current occupation and type of occupation let's take an example wherein we are appointing somebody as a director which is indian person for a indian person having pan is mandatory so when you are making an application for director certification number the concerned person should have pan second most important thing is that concerned such concerned person should have a permanent address and appropriate document for the same should be available these document includes your aadhar card your bank passbook your passport driving license is considered as valid in certain cases but in certain cases it may not be so valid because it may not contain the data appropriately written 
if data is appropriately written it could be used but advisable to have a passport or aadhar card which is considered as the most basic document for any kind of personal identification as far as the addresses of a person are concerned one passport passport size photo of the applicant is mandatory education qualification of the such concerned person knowing that is also mandatory now please understand whether the person is enoughly qualified or not is not a question which is raised by the companies act all the act wants is the information or valid information about the educational qualification of the concerned gentleman or a lady who are the maybe mobile number is mandatory email id of the such concerned applicant is mandatory do not try do not ever try to give your mobile number as a client's mobile number for the purpose of verification do not give your email id as email id for verification for such concerned client or such concerned director please understand these numbers and these emails are recorded in the data sheet of the such concerned distributor or the agent or the authority to whom or from whom you have taken the digital signature if you have a mobile number which is yours and if you are using it for somebody else please understand that this number will not be you will not be able to use it for yourself when you are taking out your digital signature or your direct identification number of course as i said earlier it is mandatory to have digital signature now let's say a situation wherein the director proposed to be appointed is a foreign national the set of documents will be little different obviously because you know there is nothing called as pan when it comes to outside countries as we have it in india in this situation what is mandatory is a passport now the observation is that passport of many countries do not have the date of birth or sometimes it do not have the residential address of such concerned person they have different different document different different countries have different different method of preparing documents so all you need to ensure that what is required by indian law that is document evidencing date of birth documents evidencing the place of residence of such concerned person whether permanent or temporary in case of temporary temporary and permanent both in case of permanent only permanent address a proof of those data is required to be attached with see you can do you can go for a driving license of that particular country you can go for electric bill you can go for telephone bills whatever is suitable and whatever is available also ensure that you know this document should be translated in english if it is not prepared in english there are various countries wherein the base language is not english now these documents which are not in english are not accepted as a proof of document you all you need to do is you need to translate these documents in english a proper english and consulate of india can or a notary public should sign it or should certify on it the proofs that i said just now like passport or your driving license or your telephone bills or electricity bills these are also document which need to be signed certified by indian embassy and a foreign public notary now one important factor which i want to bring to your notice is that let's take that you know you are asking for some document or some information from a certain gentleman who is situated abroad send all the requirements in one go do not send requirements one by one please understand that doing a notary process in india cost you some money but doing a notary process abroad costs a hell of a money a big sum of money is incurred it is required now if you are telling your client or if you are telling a gentleman to go for one set of document if you tell them like you know your birth date but birth certificate should be notarized the gentleman goes once comes back he has he there are charges which are levied on him second time again you tell him like you know go for a passport notarize it and come back charges are levied on him please do not do that ensure that the whole data sheet the whole sheet that is that you required is personally verified by you and then only please request the concerned gentleman to approach to the appropriate authority whether it is a foreign consulate or whether it is an indian embassy or a embassy or whether it is you know a notary public ensure that this happens at one go these documentary proofs should not be one year old also do not tell your client or do not tell your uh, your colleague to go for a document which are more than 1 year old if you go for something like this the document will be rejected and the process will be required to be completed one more time i would suggest that do not tell anybody to go for documents which are going to expire this one year is going to expire in near time like you know a month or two months sometimes the processing takes time you know the process of sending documents getting it back submitting may take time don't don't assume that things will happen in quick time and try to do things in a rush where you know at the end of it things go in a haphazard way ensure that you have all data 
all data which is proper all data which is properly checked by you and then the notarization happens and the data is also appropriately valid going on to the next step the moment you have your digital signature your din in place your din your document in place you can make an application for digital signature make an application for din and you get your director's identification number your basic two steps are achieved now the next important step is to go for name a suitable name which you want to go for your name for your company please understand while selecting a name there are three things which are important first is a prefix second one is a object clause and third one is a legal status as far as prefix is concerned it should be something which is relevant to the concerned promoter it should be a name which the promoter believes in maybe a name of a god maybe a name of any any anything anything a relative uh, anything which is which the promoter feels is important to him second is your object clause the object clause that you say should be matching with the name that you are giving so do not have a chemical object clause and a trading of uh, goods and commodities as your name as a part of your name ensure that you know if you are giving a object clause of a chemical company or if you are forming a chemical company ensure that a similar clause goes there or similar object clause is matched with the name that you are planning for let's say that you are going for a company which typically is a chemical company you are making an application xyz let us assume that is a prefix and now if you are going for a object clause it should be chemical chemicals chemical manufacturers or chemical traders do not write textile do not write it because it is not relevant with your object clause even though you like you may like it third important aspect here that you need to have is is a status that is called as legal status so your name is complete only when you have xyz chemicals private limited or limited as the case may be since we are discussing a formation of a private limited company all we need to have it is a private limited company as the end of it so your name for a typical chemical private limited company will be xyz chemical private limited now how do you make application for these names while making this xyz as the prefix do not have a prefix which is commonly used because if your name is identical with the names which are already existing then the name that you are applying may be rejected do not go for a prefix which is something which is already a, a listed company or a company which is already having a trademark of it is using again the same company can may can raise an objection to it also while you are drafting your object clause ensure that your object clause is ma is, is drafted in most simple manner do not have a complicated structure by which when the application goes to pro processing it goes into a loop now when you make an application you have to make an application in a form called as form inc1 if you look at this form inc1 inc1 has uh, has a if you look at the form inc1 inc1 has a place wherein you have to give six names of a of that particular company for which you are making an application ensure that you give adequate names if one name is rejected the second one can be thought upon if second is rejected third one and on can be thought upon and can be given by the mca if you make an application for one name or with one name only if it gets rejected you have another chance to make an application but then like you know if you have six men's names then the opportunity of that getting lost hardly comes and you know after these six names at least one names is name is something which is approved by the concerned ministry of corporate affairs while making an application ensure that digital signature is affixed of the person whose name appears as the promoter or the signatory authority do not put put without putting a name or without having a proper clarification do not have a digital signature affixed it may not get affixed also but if it wrongly gets affixed because of a technical error then it will could be called as a contravention to the law ensure that you know when you are using a name like udyog enterprise industry there has to be something relevant in your object clause do not have like you know uh, udyog just because you like it again it is a repetition of what i said but since this name getting a name is the most important thing see a company is identified by the name that it has if you have a name which is not matching with the intention of the promoters and just because you know you feel something and you have given something then it may not serve the purpose at a later stage even if you get a name you know at a first stage but a later stage when your certificate of incorporation is required to be taken the name may be rejected and you may have to go through the whole process again let's say that you know you are making an application wherein in your group you have similar kind similar named company then you need to have a board resolution of such similar named company by which you can say that you know this similar name company has given us a no objection to use the similar name without which you will not be able to get the concern name that you have applied for let's say that you know you have put all the documents properly 
then register of company if they are satisfied they will grant you the name which will be valid for 60 days within 60 days you have to complete the process of incorporation else you have to make an application please do not assume that the name you have got will be with you forever after the application after the 68 day if you make again application if by that time somebody else also has made an application your name might be given to somebody else you have no property right on that particular name please ensure that it goes in time next most important step drafting of documents see you have got your digital signature you have got then you have got the name that you wanted to now the next step which is supposed to be the most important step that is making and making various documents these documents are memorandum of association articles of associations and certain forms let's go first with memorandum memorandum of the company gives the object clause of the company so you have to have your main object clause which you have given in the form one while making an application exactly matching no word change here and there not even a comma coming and you have to have the same object clause as a part of incidental or ancillary clause a supporting clause to the main object clause you can have certain number of clauses but you should ensure that these clauses are in support to the main clause and not completely irrelevant if you put something which is irrelevant that these names may not be you know the company the registrar may not accept this and the a memorandum will be rejected article of association on the other side is the rule book of a company now company is at 2013 has various schedules they have given a draft set of article that shall be followed by a private limited company it's most advisable that such draft should be followed it is more advisable that these drafts if it is not followed to the full they should be changed without affecting the provisions of law in any situation if the law and if the article who who superrides is if if comes as a question then it is only the law that will supersede so do not have something which you feel is correct and the law feel is not correct also ensure that the memorandum and article that you prepare that you draft is prepared after discussing with the client after understanding his object clause his requirement of the law his requirement as far as his functions are concerned and then only draft do not have something just as taken as a base which is given under the company that 2013 and just put it please understand that incorporation of a company is a very important process that says the base of the business of a company every document related with incorporation has to be impeccable has to be completely correct post preparation of these two documents you need to prepare a declaration which can be signed by a professional and a director which is called as inc 8 we can refer to form inc 8 now form inc 8 is something which is a declaration it's a plain declaration but that needs to be signed INC 9 is next form which we need to sign which is a affidavit from each person and subscriber named as a first director that he is not convicted of any offense and is not found guilty or of any fraud or misfeasance or any breach of duty to any company during preceding 5 years and all the documents that they have filed are correct to their knowledge this affidavit needs to be the concerned director who is signing needs to understand it well and then only it should be signed now we can refer to form INC 1 This is the form I N C one, which can be used. Okay, this is the base of your certification. See, please understand that the directors, please make them aware of what misfeasances. Please make them aware of what offences can be considered as offences which are considered under this act, and what are the consequences of it. Without making your director aware, please do not have any document signed that will not add value. Next one is. verification of signature of subscriber which happens in form called as form inc 10 now resolutions from parent company towards subscription of memorandum of association in case the shareholder of a company the promoter of a company is a private limited company or a public limited company you need to have a resolution authorizing somebody to sign these documents in case it is a individual the individual can sign as a subscriber but in case it being a corporate you need to have a resolution authorizing authorizing somebody by which this document can be sign no objection letter from the owner for use of place is also mandatory if you are using somebody's place if the place belongs to the director of the company then the director should give a no objection certificate that he has no objection for using a particular place as a place of business for the company dr2 is the next form which we need to understand dr2 is a consent to act as director now consent to act as a director again this is the format of it we need to Take a signature of the director, scan and attach with the consent forms by which this can be submitted to the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. 
DR8 is disclosure of interest by the director. This also is a mandatory form. DR8 is something which you have to sign, take a signature from a director that is, and then attach to the concern form along with memorandum articles and other forms and submit to the MC as a full set of document that is required. Now why this document is required, what could be the logic is, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs wants to know the complete information, the complete data about the gentlemen who are forming the company and it is available only to the declarations that we give. Now these declarations will be signed, certified and these forms will be certified, maybe certified by yourself or some other professional. Ensure that every data which is given in that is fact. There is no, not even a single error, name, address, anything is not missing. Please understand this data gets verified with the PAN data and the other data. Also the government has a mechanism to verify this data with other departments and if you are quoting something wrong and if you are certifying it as correct then as a professional one can come in a problem. My advice is to not to go for it. Ensure that you know you take more time but do your job properly. Do not rush through. This is again I am telling one more time that this is very important in corporation. Do not rush through at all. If the process takes about 30-35 days time, if it takes 36 days time, that's okay. But do not try to rush through with these documents. Do not prepare these documents without taking consent of direct, your consent, promoter, director as the, as the case may be. Please send all these documents for the approval of the directors. They may come out and say like, you know, we are laymen, we don't understand. Call them to your office or you visit to their office. Tell them these are the facts. Please understand this. Every aspect of memorandum, every object clause should be explained to them. Every article, every provision should be explained to them. Nobody should sign a document without knowing it to be correct, uncorrect, fair, unfair as the case may be. As a professional, ensure that you know these documents are read through, discuss at length, every point is understood and then only the directors are signing it. It's most advisable to call these people to your office in case they are Indian. If they are not Indian, then you know you can tell them over a, over a call or a conference call or a video call. But ensure that you read every clause and every provision, every form, every wording of the form, and it is made understood to the concerned client. Let's say that you know you know these documents are something which you are preparing, but said let's say that a situation comes wherein you know you have a foreign shareholder. You, we taught about a foreign director, we realized, you know, we understood some of the provisions by which we have to go to the consulate and take this document notarized when we were applying for DIN of a foreign proposed director. Now let's go for a foreign subscriber. Subscriber is somebody who is promoting the company, who is signing as a subscriber or committing to buy certain number of shares of a particular private limited company. Now every subscriber has to write details of subscription in his own handwriting whether Indian, foreign. Indian people, you can call them, you can make them right in front of you. But foreigners, like you know, if you're telling them, you have to educate and ensure that it comes in their own handwriting. Do not go for a shortcut of preparing it yourself and sending it. The shortcuts can be really long cuts because you know, these documents are verified in person by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs and the Register of Companies Affairs Offices. Interestingly, these documents, which are which you are getting it from a foreign shareholder, are also required to be notarized or also they have to go to channel of Indian Embassy. Now again please ensure that you know do not give this document in nuts and bits. Prepare the whole set, a guidance note, a draft you know when you are sending documents prepare a draft note and these are documents which are required to be prepared. These are the papers which are required to be signed and then send it to the concerned shareholder with a request to you know copy it from there and then the concern shareholder, if there is a chance of committing mistake, goes down drastically. Most importantly, these documents when need, needing a notary or any of these things, ensure that you guide them properly and these documents come to you in, in one tranche, not different different tranche. It doesn't come to you one document, nuts, another document, again nuts and bits, don't do that. Document should go properly, it should come back to you properly. It syncs the data properly and it helps you to form the company in quick time. Now, interestingly, if such, such concerns foreign director, if he is in India, let's say you are not supposed to send it to outside, but the gentleman is in India, then you need to ensure that his visa is attached to this document. And, uh, you know, these documents are prepared assuming this gentleman to be in India only based on the visa, not based on anything else. So somebody says to you that, you know, I was in India, so like, or I am in India, please, you know, prepare a document and get it notarized or, you know, do the process which can be done in India, don't go for it unless and until you have a visa copy with you. This visa copy is required to be attached with, again this visa is verified. 
बट लाइक यू नो वेन यू हैव पर्सन ऑफ इंडियन ओरिजिन और ओवरसीज सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया यू डोंट हैव टू हैव अ वीजा विच इज बिजनेस वीजा रेस्ट ऑफ द केसेस सिंस द जेंटलमैन इज कमिंग टू इंडिया फॉर अ बिजनेस पर्पज यू हैव टू अ बिजनेस वीजा ट्रैवलर्स वीजा विजिटर्स वीजा इज नॉट समथिंग विच इज एक्सेप्टेड फॉर मेकिंग एन एप्लीकेशन एज अ सब्सक्राइबर प्लीज टेल द कंसर्न क्लाइन डैट यू हैव टू अ बिजनेस वीजा टू हैव दिस डॉक्यूमेंट साइंड दीज डॉक्यूमेंट्स मस्ट बी वेरीफाइड पब्लिक नोटरी ऑफ दैट कंट्री और द ऑफिसर्स ऑफ द एम्बसी एंड शुड बी सेंट टू अस now i'll list down certain documents which are required which a foreign subscriber should must or must submit to the company board resolution of foreign entity authorizing investment in shares if such gentleman is not investing himself or investing through a company copy of certificate of incorporation of such foreign company address proof of such foreign company these documents are required to be submitted to the register of companies through the ministry of website ministry of corporate affairs website so like you know once we have a name we will be submitting document of memorandum article and certain number of forms the duly subscribed memorandum article this subscription is something for a indian person it will be done in front of you ideal is to do in front of you for a, for a foreign gentleman you have to send with the proper instructions and duly notarized document should come to you or duly document uh, uh, embassy embassy certified document should come to you and then only you can submit now these documents once you submit and if the registrar of companies feel that you know these documents are correct then these documents are accepted and you may get a certificate of or you will get a certificate of incorporation let's talk about a situation wherein you have a gentleman who is absolutely illiterate now literally having having knowledge about something is different than having a qualification law says tell us the qualification it doesn't tell what is the minimum qualification to act as a subscriber or a director so interestingly there are there are possibilities that you will come across with people who are absolutely illiterate in such case ensure that his thumb impression is taken and against that some impression somebody should sign and that somebody should be given or somebody should be authorized by such concerned person so let's say mr a is a subscriber who who has given a thumb impression so mr b who is signing on his behalf or certifying documents on his behalf should state that mr a i was told by mr a to do this certification and declaration to that effect should be attached and affixed as a part of your documents to be submitted to the register of companies now interestingly when you are submitting these documents you need to file additional form called as form inc 22 which talks about the the place of business of the company i have explained earlier that you know you, uh, if you have your own premises that's fine but that doesn't happen for a typical comp- company for a company because you know the company is yet to be formed so you have you are using premises of a promoter you are using premises of a director or strangers premises take a noc and attach to these forms most important factor these processes these steps are the basic steps which i have told you ministry of corporate affairs is 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 going through a process of making the process even more simpler so before submitting any of these documents it is advisable to visit to the ministry of corporate affairs one more time the steps will not change steps are predetermined prefix but a document that you require to submit may change like the foreign notary or maybe the notary may be replaced with the indian embassy certification or vice versa or it could be replaced with a gentleman or it could be replaced with a authority in india or it could be replaced with something called as apostlement ensure that before sending any information sheet you have visited the site of ministry of corporate affairs once all these documents are properly prepared properly submitted what you get is a certificate of incorporation and that ends your process of forming a company now to recap the first step is applying for digital signature digital signature is an encrypted code step 2 is making an application for director's identification number director's identification number is mandatory for any person to act as director whether indian or foreign there are documents which are required which are different different for a foreign gentleman the document need to be notarized or and it need to be embassied step 3 making an application ensure that while making an application you use due diligence or you use due diligence and check the data online and do not make an application for a name which is similar also your name matches with the uh, the object clause of the company post getting the name within 60 days you will prepare documents 
take signature of the subscribers take signature of the foreign subscribers by sending them requisition or sending them the basic data or beta sheet and getting his embassy or getting it notarized from a foreign foreign notary step 5 submitting along with INC 21 and the last step that you get is certificate of incorporation thank you very much